KPM. Assalamualaikum. Hello everybody. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing great. My name is Nisa K and you guys will be with me until 6 p.m. So stay tuned until at the end of the show. And I would like to remind all of you guys who are watching to always comply to the SOP set by the government because we are still battling the COVID-19. Always wear your face mask when you're in the public area and keep a social distancing of at least one meter. Always wash your hands using soap and water and sanitize your hands when needed. So, uh, today's episode is actually something that is very interesting because I am very in love with this subject, English, but I am not taking SPM back in my school days, so this is something new for me and also I hope you guys will be sitting with us until the end of the show. Prepare your pen and papers to take notes of today's uh, lesson. So, to introduce you guys to the teacher or to the uh, special person that be, will be with us today, uh, let's see her profile. Everybody, let's welcome Dr. Susan Philip uh, uh, from Depart Department of English, Faculty of Arts and Social Science of University of Malaya. How are you, Doctor? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. How are you feeling today for um, today's episode? I'm excited because I want to share about I'm this excited subject too. Yeah. <laughs> because I think I've been uh, going through the slides for a bit, so I thought that I will be your new student today. Is it okay? <laughs> okay. Yes, that's great. <laughs> All right. So uh, I saw your tagline just now. It was mm -hmm. uh, read. Imagine, uh, what what was the word? Learn, <laughs> learn and grow. grow. Is that your your talent for for every day? Um, well, that's what I believe mm. that uh, literature can do for us. Yes. If we read, every book we read teaches us something. Definitely. It engages imagination, and we yes. definitely grow. And I love reading books and novels. Good. So, is that what we're going to learn today? Yes. All right. So, uh, doctor, uh, let me ask you to come back to this table because we need to sanitize okay, our hands of course. from the lesson begin okay. all right and keep the social distance of at least one meter shoulder to shoulder and if you need to open your mask when the the surround is safe so make sure to keep your mask in the uh, clean case or in the okay. pocket uh, to make sure that you can actually reuse this again if it's still uh, clean and please do not exceed the eight hours usage always have extra face mask with you whenever you are all right so yes sure okay. thank you uh, before we proceed with our lesson today as we both are very excited and i guess uh, all of the viewers are very excited too uh, we will be coming back after this don't go anywhere Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM The topic that I like the most in literature would be in semester 1 because I get to learn a lot of short stories and poems and the themes are mostly about love, multiculturalism and family which I could relate well to and the hardest part for me to score would be critical appreciation as I could only answer according to the text given unlike open essay and I find it quite tough and sometimes I struggle to understand the words and the sentences especially when it is written by Shakespeare. Among the topics that I've learned, the most favorite topic is pride and prejudice. It is because it teaches not to misjudge a person quickly. Besides that, the hardest part to score in literature is critical analyze. Critical analyze, you will be given a question without any extract, which consumes a lot of time to think and analyze. To talk about literature, I enjoy learning short stories and poems way much better than dramas, plays and novels because I found myself understanding this particular literature component better and easier. I also faced a little bit of struggle when it came to answering the essay questions because apart from me understanding what I have been given, I had to make sure that um, my ideas and my elaborations were executed 
in in the right technique and making sure the examiner understands what I'm trying to say. Um, other than that, I was able to rectify this particular issue with teacher's guidance and and few and going through sample essays. Other than that, literature is fun. Dede TV KPM. Yes, that's what our friends uh, think about the subject. And of course, I do love short stories and poems too. And some of them say that what interests them the most is when the topics are relatable to them. But some of them say that it's quite hard at critical analyze. Is it true? It's something that you can learn to do with practice. With practice. Yes. So, yes. Uh, Doctor, I am not alone here, so I have brought my friends over right. with me. Uh, so, can we welcome our friends from Penang Free School, Georgetown? We have Karen and Shania. And we would like to welcome also SMK St. Thomas Kuching Sarawak students, Trinity and Deandra. Hello, everybody. Hi. Are you guys excited for today's lesson? You can actually open your mic to answer me. <laughs> yeah, we're very yeah. excited. Very excited. Hi, everyone. Hi, yeah. Professor. Yeah, very excited. Hi, Professor. Hello. Are you ready to answer some questions? <laughs> I bet Doctor have prepared some for you guys. <laughs> All right, Doctor, let's begin our lesson All right. today. All right, first I'd like to say, uh, I hope this works. I'd like to welcome mm -hmm. you all to this um, Road to Success session. Mm -hmm. All right, that's me. All right, I come from the uh, Department of English in the Arts Faculty of University Malaya, where I teach literature. And today I just want to take you through some of the things that you need to do in order to do better in order to succeed in your literature papers. So for this semester, we're looking at paper three, which is novels. So what you're going to be seeing is Pride and Prejudice uh, by Jane Austen and The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan, which seem different, but they actually have a lot of um, areas of connection between them. So let me just take you first through the structure of the paper. All right? It's divided into three sections that's A, B, and C, and you have to answer one question from each section. Please make sure you do that. Don't think that if I do really well in this section, then I don't have to bother with the other section. All three sections are marked equally. They each have 25 marks, so give each section your full attention, all right? So um, section A is critical appreciation, and section B and C are the essay questions. So under critical appreciation, this is where you have some choice. There are two questions, all right? One passage taken from each novel. All right? And after each passage, there will be a question. And you have to choose one or the other passage. Don't make the mistake of answering both, because then you won't have enough time for the rest of your questions. The big thing about the critical appreciation paper is that you can only answer based on what is in the passage. You cannot refer to anything that went before or anything that comes after. So all your answers come strictly from what is in the passage. Right. Then you move on to sections B and C, the essay questions. Each section will have one essay question, so one on Pride and Prejudice, and one on the Joy Luck Club, and you have to answer both. Now, once you're clear what to do in the exam, you have to think about preparing to actually do the exam, all right? And my first piece of advice to you is to read the book, preferably read it four times. Four I'm not times. kidding, four times, all right? So the first time you read it to just understand the story, all right? So you get the plot. The second time, you read it with a little more attention to start picking up details about the story. The third time, you read it to understand the literary elements like theme and language and imagery and so on. And then the fourth time, you read it to just put everything together. And I am not saying read it four times just before the exam. That would be madness. Mm -hmm. You should have started reading it at the beginning of the semester and read it three times so that now, just before the exam, you can go through it again to refresh your memory. 
You should also, as far as you can, read about the books, all right? So you can find articles and books and book chapters which other people have written about Pride and Prejudice and the Joy Luck Club. And you should read those because that'll help you expand your knowledge about the book. Um, at this point, I'm gonna say, don't depend on sites like Wikipedia, except if you go to a Wikipedia page about Pride and Prejudice, what you can do is go to the bottom of the page and there will be a list of resources. Use those resources. That's what it can point you towards. When it comes to answering exam questions, time management is key, right? You have three questions, you have two hours, give yourselves 40 minutes per answer. Try to be as strict as you can about that because the last thing you want to do is spend one whole hour on one question and it's an absolutely beautiful answer and then you don't have time to do a good answer for the next question. So give yourselves equal time for each question because as I say, each one is 20, 25 marks. Oh, that's a right? lot. <laughs> yes. Um, spend about five or 10 minutes just reading the question to try and understand what it's asking. And then uh, you take notes, you plan what to write, you sketch out some ideas about what to put in your essay, and then you write. And I would suggest that you also break down the remaining time so that you allocate, for example, eight minutes on the introduction, uh, 24 minutes on the body, maybe three minutes on the conclusion. Conclusion can be very, very short. This is just a suggestion. You don't have to follow this exactly. Do what works for you. But obviously, you want to spend the longest amount of time on the body of the essay because that's what's important. Read the question. Don't just jump into it and write whatever you know. Read the question. Ask yourself, what does it want? Is it asking you to look at language or literary techniques or theme or any of those things? And then, what does it want you to do? Does it say examine? Does it say discuss? Right? These are terminologies that your teachers will be going through with you. So you must learn to pay attention to what exactly the question is asking. Um, and very importantly, don't just write everything you know. Right? You have to target your knowledge to the question. Okay? So for example, if the question is about setting and character, how does setting help Elizabeth understand Darcy better? Right. Um, you have to talk about the important settings in the novel. You have to decide which characters you're going to focus on. And then you have to look at how do the details of the setting bring out that character, help us to understand that character better. So don't bring in all your knowledge about imagery and metaphor and language and all that unless it is directly relevant to the question. Right. One of the things that your examiners will be interested in is how well you can focus on the question. Very important, do not summarize. That's so, I thought literature in English is all about summarizing the passage. No. no, you have to assume that the person who's reading your essay mm -hmm. knows the book. Mm -hmm. I've read Pride and Prejudice, I've read The Joy Luck Club. I don't need you to tell me the story. I need you to explain to me how the, the novel works. How do Amy Tan and Jane Austen bring out these characters? What techniques do they use? So even if you do want to summarize, keep it very, very short. Right, bare bones summary. Focus on analyzing. Analyzing. Yes. Very important, structure your essay logically. All right, uh, don't just jump into it. Make sure you have an introduction. Explain what you're gonna do. I will take you through this in more detail in a short while, but explain what you're gonna do. You have to also define key terms. If the question is asking you about imagery, Tell us that you know what imagery is by explaining it, right? Or what do you mean by characterization and so on? And then you just give a brief statement of how you are going to approach the question. 
for example, I will look at setting in relation to the character of Darcy. So what happens is if you set out the introduction like that, you follow that structure in the body of your essay and it keeps your essay nice and logical, all right? well structured. So you explain what you're going to focus on, you go through it, you analyze um, and tell us how does this help understand character. And organize your points logically, don't jump from one point to the other and then go back and so on. And have a conclusion. Don't leave your reader hanging, right? We don't want to come to the end of your essay, turn the page over and say, oh, the oh, essay's ended. <laughs> All right, tell us that you finished your essay. Um, and I would say avoid moral endings. So you are past the stage at STPM of saying the moral of the story is whatever. Don't do that. The easiest thing to do is to just restate what you've already done in your essay. All right, remember this, your essay is, say what you're going to say, say it, and then say what you said. All right, and that is your introduction, body, and conclusion. Very important uh, when you're writing an essay is to show how ideas are connected. All right? um, this also helps you keep things logically structured in your mind. So when you have are moving from one point to the next, use transition words and phrases such as, first, I'm gonna talk about this, second, this is my point, or next, or moreover, therefore, but, thus, all these words which help us to see how you're moving to the next point. But it's very important that you know what the words mean and how to use them. For example, if you use however, the point of using however is that you are contrasting with what you just said. All right, so make sure that there's a difference in what you're saying before you use the word however. Again, uh, your teachers and a little bit of work on Google will tell you something about how to use these words. Other worries that I think some students have is what if I can't remember the words for a quote? All right. Um, we don't expect you to memorize the book. All right. That would be extremely unreasonable. Even for plays, even for poetry, you can't always trust that you remember right. So if you can't remember the quote exactly, paraphrase. All right. For example, the first line of Pride and Prejudice is, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a large fortune must be in want of a wife. One of the most famous lines in all of the history of the novel. But at the crucial moment, you might not remember. Don't worry, just say, in the opening of the novel, Jane Austen suggests this. All right, so don't put yourself in trouble by trying to remember exactly and panicking about it. Paraphrase. Do not get, get hung up on how long the essay should be. Some people have a different style. They write longer essays. Some people write shorter essays. The important thing is you must answer the question as fully as you can. Having said that, if your essay is half a page or one page long, that pretty much would suggest that you're not going into enough detail. But other than that, don't sit there thinking, oh no, my friend has already asked for extra paper and I still haven't. We Maybe your friend just has a different very style. When, when our friends do that, they yes. ask for extra papers and we will be like, oh no, am I not doing it right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I've been through that myself. Yes. And the thing you have to remember is no, that person writes differently. Mm -hmm. I write, I write uh, more concisely and they write longer. Don't worry what anyone else is doing, focus on what you have to do and just try to be as complete as possible. All right. So just to recap, know the book, understand what the question is asking for, use quotes from the text or paraphrase from the text to support your argument, um, organize as clearly as possible and lead from one point to the next. Okay, are you all clear so far? Any of you have questions for me? Give me a thumbs up if you are clear so far. Thumbs up. Okay. All right.
right. All right, good. If you do have questions, just um, stop All me. All right, sure, All right. Sure. So what I'm going to do is take you through how to answer the actual exam questions. And I'm going to look at the 2013 SDPM paper. So if you want, you can go back and find that paper yourself. And I'll start with section A, the critical appreciation, and we will look at the Joy Luck Club. This was the novel that um, sort of broke Amy Tan into the public consciousness. Right, again, focus only on what is in the excerpt. So you read the passage to understand the story, see what the question wants you to do, go back and look at the excerpt again and underline the important things, all right? Then answer the question. Now, we're gonna look very quickly at the passage. I'm not gonna read it, don't worry. <laughs> right, the first paragraph is a description of a scary incident that happened to the narrator when she was very young and how her mother, instead of comforting her, kind of scared her even more. The second paragraph talks about how that affected her so that she started to be just basically scared of everything around her, right? Even normal things like playground equipment. This is also where we find out that the narrator is half Chinese, all right? Um, we go on where she talks about being half Chinese and how a lot of people don't know she is because she looks more like her white father. But she is very conscious of the Chinese part of her heritage. So, for example, she goes around the house with her eyes open very wide in an attempt not to look so Chinese, with the result that her father looks at her and says, why are you walking around looking scared? All right. And that then connects with the final paragraph, where she talks about a photograph of her mother, in which her mother also looks very scared. And that final paragraph links the mother and daughter and tells us something about the daughter's identity. All right. So the question is, examine how the narrator perceives her identity. So you've got to look at what is her identity, mm -hmm. what does she think of her identity, and how do we know it? How does Amy Tan put it across to us so that we understand her? First of all, don't summarize the passage. All right, I've done that just now because we don't have time to read the whole thing. But in your answer, don't bother, it just wastes time and space. The question says, examine how the narrator perceives her identity. So you cannot just make a statement about her identity. You cannot just say she's confused about her mixed heritage identity and then leave it at that. The important thing is how do we know this? So, you have to look closely and analyze. That is what examine means. Now, how are we going to do this? The introduction can tell us what you think about her identity. First, she seems fearful of a lot of things. She's scared of a lot of things. Second, she's conflicted about her identity. All right? um, she is in some ways spiritually more connected with her Chinese mother than with her Caucasian father, even though she looks more like him. And she realizes that there is a connection between her and her mother, mm -hmm. right? These are some of the points you can make about her identity. And then you can talk about these things. First, you talk about how the fear really governs how she lives her life, mm -hmm. all right? And you can give detailed examples to show how she is scared of things that are really not scary, all right? Um, one of the things she talks about is lightning, right? She's scared of lightning, which is just a natural phenomenon. Mm -hmm. When lightning strikes, she doesn't just see lightning. She sees it as something with eyes, and those eyes are searching for children. So for her, Every time lightning strikes, she's in danger, she's vulnerable, because she's a child, and maybe that lightning is looking to strike her. Mm -hmm. right. If you go back and look at um, her description of the sandbox, the beetle, all these things, which are really very common things, the way she describes them shows how fearful she is. All right, so that's the level of description that you need to be looking at. 
how is this related to identity? Because all we've done is analyze the fear. Mm -hmm. It shows or is tied to her conflicted mixed identity. race identity. All yes. right. Uh, Dr. Susan, yes. I, uh, I would like to, to, uh, to can we can go back to the previous uh, slide? Yeah. So at this, uh, so at this point, do you guys understand? This seems like really focused, but are you guys okay? <laughs> okay. All, all right. right. I'm afraid they are really like. Okay, I want to ask something, but I if don't you know do, how. If yeah, you want to ask, please just interrupt ask, me. Just yeah? turn on your microphone and and uh, say I have a question to ask and to our friends at home if you have uh, the papers or the questions with you the novel you can actually uh, do some um, what we call uh, homework with us yeah. uh, today for, for today's lesson as for now and I hope you guys are jotting down all the information because I have done a lot I guess <laughs> I'm the new students here are you sitting for the exam as yeah, well? yeah I'm sitting for the exam with the friends alright so I guess we will take a little bit of a break so don't go anywhere I'll see you guys after this Dede TV KPM Dede TV KPM all right, coming back to Road to Success STPM 2020. And uh, so far, Dr. Suna has shared with us how to understand the, the requirements of the questions so that you won't go astray and answer it like differently, like what the question is actually asked. Mm -hmm. So let's proceed with our lesson, Dr. Okay. All right, so we're moving on to the point about conflicted identity. So you can see how she's conflicted because she's talking about being part Chinese, but looking Caucasian, but she feels more Chinese and so on, All right? So she looks more Caucasian than Chinese, and yet her identity is not Caucasian. And we can see this in her negative description of her own appearance. Um, she criticizes the Chinese part of her, of her features. Um, she's very strongly aware of her Chinese heritage because her Chinese mother has influenced her. All right. So all in all, she's not comfortable with her mixed race identity. All right. um, and I think in terms of Malaysia, this is something that we can also think about if you want to think about what is relata relatable about this American novel. This identity is something that I think many of us do have to confront in our everyday lives. Now, the last thing we want to look at is the connection with the mother. Now, the mother in the photograph looks scared the way the daughter does when she's opening her eyes wide. And she looks scared because when she first arrived in America, no one knew how to classify her and she no longer knew where she belonged. She was identified as a displaced person, meaning she no longer has a place. She's out of her place and she no longer has a place to belong to. And what connects the mother and the daughter is that the daughter is also a displaced person. She's not quite sure which place she belongs to. So that is her heritage. She's conflicted and confused about her mixed race heritage. And because of that, she doesn't know where she belongs. All right. So for your conclusion, you just recap that. All right. Briefly explain that she is fearful because she doesn't know where she belongs. That is what connects her with her mother. And she doesn't seem to know how to overcome that. OK? Any questions, guys? Any questions? Uh, excuse me, Professor. I have a yes. question. Yeah. Um, so in our essay, right? Um, let's say if I were to be someone who is of mixed race, is it okay if I um, relate my personal experience in our in the essay just so that my examiner can have like a better understanding from my point of view as a mixed race person? Okay, first of all, if you have time to do that, all right, don't spend a lot of time doing that and then you don't answer the question. But I would say that direct um, experience in that way can be helpful as long as you don't use that as um, your explanation rather than looking at the text. Bringing in your own personal experience, it shows that you have kind of um, connected with the text, which is very good. But you must be able to say, my experience is like the narrator's 
and these are the things that were similar for us. So you draw a connection with the book so that we know you're still connected with what is happening in the book. So she must relate herself back to the passage yes. stated in the question. Please. Yes. All right. Thank you, Trinity, for the uh, question. Great. Thank you, Professor. Anyone else? All right, maybe you have something for Pride and Prejudice. Yes. All right. Yeah, this is important. Uh, if you look back at my slides, I've put in a lot of detail. You may not have time for all of this. Don't worry about it. This is an example of the kind of depth you can go into, the kind of detail, but you might only have time to put in just a few of the things that I have mentioned in the slide. Okay, so don't panic. Okay, we move on to Pride and Prejudice, which I believe is generally very popular. It's kind of the precursor to a lot of modern romantic comedies, mm -hmm. but there's quite a lot of depth to it as well, which is why it's lasted in popularity for so long. All right. So we'll look at the essay question for Pride and Prejudice. This is from 2013. Examine Jane Austen's use of irony in Pride and Prejudice. And irony, that's a word that scares students. Oh no, Why? it's a literary technique. Don't let it scare you. All right, so this is actually a very broad question because this novel is just irony from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. Jane Austen uses irony a lot. So a question that says, examine her use of irony. You could write anything, you could write for a month and still not be done. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is to decide where you want to focus, right? You set the limits of your discussion in the introduction. And also remember what examine means. It means look closely and analyze. So you start in your intro by defining the term irony so that you're clear what it means and we know that you are clear as well. So basically, it's a literary technique in which there's a surface meaning and a deeper meaning, and usually the deeper meaning is the opposite of the surface meaning. There are three types or several types of irony. Verbal, which is mostly like sarcasm. Very often when we think of verbal irony, it's sarcasm. You have dramatic irony, which is where the character doesn't know something, but we do. So we know what's going on, the character doesn't, and they are sort of doing the wrong thing based on their lack of knowledge. And situational irony is sort of like when things happen in a way that is not expected by us or the characters. So what you can do once you understand what irony is, you focus it down and you could say, you're going to talk about the importance of marriage to women in Austen society. And in your essay, you could say, I will show how Austen uses irony to bring out her main ideas about marriage and what makes a marriage successful or unsuccessful. All right. So in your body, you have to explain this. What you do basically is you make a statement and then you bring in textual proof to support your statement. And again, organization is important. Generally, what you do is you move from broad ideas, general ideas, to more focused ideas, from least important to most important. So you should finish your essay on the most important point. All right. So, in setting up your essay, you need to sort of explain what it is you're discussing. Explain why marriage is so central to the novel, which is something I hope you all know. Right. Are you clear why marriage is so important in Pride and Prejudice? Anyone want to give me an answer? Uh, yeah. I can. Okay. Professor, um, marriage is central to the plot because back then in the Regency era, a marriage was like the only way a woman could really elevate herself in society. Like there weren't any other pathways available for her. That is absolutely is that, right. Yeah. A woman you, in those days, a middle-class woman like Jane Austen, couldn't go out and work. It just was not allowed. Mm -hmm. And so unless she had her own money, the only way for her to survive in the future was to get married to someone who would provide her with that security. Mm -hmm. 
So it was assumed this is what all women want. It's the guiding principle of Mrs. Bennett's life. She's got five daughters to deal with and not much money to give them. So what you can do is talk about how Austen uses irony to critique the way marriage is treated in her society. It's not something she agrees with, all right? Doctor, I have a yes. question. It seems that the question uh, to this, uh, the, the question was quite general and broad. Isn't it dangerous uh, for the students because they might tend to, I mean, the sky's the limit, I guess. Mm -hmm. They might tend to overuse the time to answer this kind of question. That's why it's important in the beginning to narrow down your focus. Down. Yeah, so that you know I'm writing about this one thing and that can all fit into 40 there minutes. Will, there's a lot of uh, topics or, or uh, focus uh, in the novel itself for you to choose, so choose yes. wisely, so you won't be, um, what we call, wasting any time answering the questions. Maybe you want to try, oh, what this focus, and then, oh, I cannot do this, and then and let's moving on to the next mm -hmm. focus. So it might, you know, causing you to lose uh, a little bit of time there, so let's not do that and make sure which focus you want to answer, to put on your uh, examination paper. So, uh, Doctor, I yes. guess we all should be taking a break a little bit, can okay. we? All right, so I'll see you guys after this. Don't go anywhere. Dede TV KPM Dede TV KPM Thank you to those who are still watching us uh, in a Road to Success as TPM 2020 always comply today. Sophie, I would like to remind you guys to always sanitize your hands whenever needed. Always wash your hands with water and soap. Wear face masks in the public area and maintain social distance of at least one meter shoulder to shoulder. And never reuse uh, a dirty face mask. Always bring extra masks so you can always use the clean one so that we can actually uh, keep ourselves safe and keep people around us safe. So, uh, as for now, I think uh, Dr. Susan have shared on how to extract uh, details and uh, pointers according to what the question wants. So, we won't be um, writing something else in, in, yes. the, in the answering sheets. Uh, so, can we uh, proceed uh, to okay. our next slide? All right. So, once you've um, explained why marriage is so central, mm -hmm then you need to go into how irony is used in order to critique the idea of marriage. All right. You've already, in your intro, you've spoken about, uh, sorry, about verbal and dramatic and situational. Mm -hmm. So just follow that um, structure for the body of your essay. <coughs> All right. So you can talk about verbal irony. She uses a lot of verbal irony. And in this book, particularly Mr. Bennett and Elizabeth, are very fond of using verbal irony, but they use it in two very different ways. Right. Mr. Bennett can often be quite cruel in the way he uses verbal irony. For example, there's a scene where Mary, at, uh, at one of the balls, Mary is playing the piano, and Mary is not a good piano player. Austin tells us this. But her father at one point tells her, oh, you know what, Mary, you can stop playing. You have delighted us long enough. And he's being very sarcastic because she's delighting no one because mm -hmm. her playing is so bad. Unfortunately, Mary gets it and she is somewhat hurt and embarrassed by this. He is also constantly embarrassing Mrs. Bennett, which is slightly different because Mrs. Bennett never really gets it. But the point is that he has this slightly cruel side. He is not an ideal marriage partner. And even Elizabeth, who loves him very much and who gets on with him, is aware of this cruel side. Now, Elizabeth only uses verbal irony with people she knows will understand. She uses it, for example, with Jane. And when she uses it, it's, it's friendly, it's like banter, it's not cruelty. She's not lashing out and criticizing Jane. All right. So she is playful rather than cruel. And so the different ways in which Mr. Bennett and Elizabeth use verbal irony tells us something about what they would be like as marriage partners. Dramatic irony. So you do the same thing. You show an example or two and talk about how that would, um, how that talks about marriage. Right. Um, for example, when Mr. Collins proposes to Elizabeth, why I say it's dramatic irony 
is because we know perfectly well that she is not going to accept him. There is not a hope that she will accept him. But he goes into it with full confidence that she will be happy and even grateful to accept his proposal. He feels that way because that is what the situation was for women. I think, Trinity, as you mentioned earlier, if you're a woman in that society, you basically take the first proposal of marriage that comes along because you have very few choices. But the fact that Elizabeth says no because she cannot even begin to respect Mr. Collins is Austin's way of suggesting, you know what, there must be a different way of doing this. So clearly, marriage as it was practiced then is not ideal. And situational irony, I'll just give you another quick example, uh, again, including Mr. Collins. Um, he proposes to Charlotte Lucas and she accepts. And this is a big surprise to us because Charlotte is an intelligent young woman. She is Elizabeth's best friend. So we, like Elizabeth, expect that she will look at Mr. Collins and say, ha, not a chance, but she doesn't. Why? Because she represents the sad truth of what it is to be a woman in that society. She's 27, which for that time is very old. She doesn't have a lot of her own money. She needs to marry someone who will provide her with that security. So unfortunately, this is just the reality which Jane Austen is reminding us of. Another example of situational irony, obviously, is that Elizabeth and Darcy start off hating each other and then they end up married. It maybe doesn't qualify as situational irony anymore because this actually set the pattern for all following romantic comedies where the hero and heroine start off hating each other mm -hmm. and end up in love. All right, so it's not that big a surprise to us anymore. Yes. And your conclusion. Again, something very simple to just wrap up what you have shown. So we can see that Austen's use of irony works to critique or criticize common approaches to marriage, as well as to show us what she considered to be an ideal marriage, which obviously was Elizabeth and Darcy, because they have struggled to get to know each other, and they have come to a much deeper understanding and knowledge of the kind of people they are. So, some final words of advice before I turn to ask you some questions. Mm -hmm. You must know the book very, very well. Because right. you don't know what you're going to be confronted with. In the exam, you need to be at a stage where you look at the question and you say, ah, yes, I can take this event, I can take that incident, mm -hmm. without hesitating or thinking too much. Right. So you must be able to use the most appropriate example to support your point. That's what comes with knowing the book. Don't try to spot questions. Do not tell yourself, uh, OK, I will focus on character studies for this year. Because you've got one question, one essay question, and you have no idea what it's going to be about. Could be character, it could be theme, it could be imagery, it could be um, symbolism. All right. So the best bet is to know, have a very broad knowledge of the book rather than focus too, na too narrowly on something which might not even turn up in the exam. That's why they have to read four times. That's why you have to read four times, <laughs> yes. Um, so keep calm and read on. And finally, I'd like to wish you all the very best in your exams and turn it over to you if you have any questions for me. Who has questions? Yes, Deandra. Um, hello. Hi. Hi. Professor. Hello, my name is Deandra. I have a question for you, Professor. Yeah. So based on what we just discussed earlier and what you just concluded about um, the ideas of marriage and pride and prejudice, mm -hmm. do you think that there are differing um, ideas on marriage in the novel? Yeah, basically what Jane Austen is doing mm -hmm. is presenting the prevailing view, the view that society takes about marriage, which is that women must be married mm -hmm. because they can't go out and work, they can't support themselves, so they need a man to look after them, mm -hmm. all right? Um, this is not something that Austen necessarily agrees with. In importantly, Jane Austen herself never married. Mm -hmm. all right. 
she was single. She, she unfortunately also died quite young, but that's not the reason she didn't get married. <laughs> um, what she's trying to put forward is an idea of marriage of equal partners, right? People who get to know each other, they see each other at their worst mm -hmm. and then at their best, and they come to an understanding of each other, i.e. they fall in love based on mutual respect. And the only couple that we see that happening with is Elizabeth and Darcy. Even Jane and Bingley, um, they, they don't go through that many struggles. They're both just nice, sweet people, and they seem to be pushed around and manipulated a bit by Darcy and Jane, I mean, Elizabeth. And you know that they'll have a nice, sweet marriage. Um, they're kind of a subplot. The real ideal we should be looking at is Elizabeth and Darcy, and Austen contrasts that with the general understanding of what marriage is in that society. Does that answer your question, Deandra? Um, Yes, it does. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for it. Right. Right. I can see, Doctor, that uh, this novel, Pride and Prejudice, must be quite famous among the students. <laughs> May I know why? Why do you love Pride and Prejudice? Maybe maybe Shania can, can share with us? Or, or do you actually like the other novel? <laughs> yeah, if you like the other one, please yeah. say so. Can you tell me why do you... Why, choose one novel and tell us why do you like that, that one? Okay, so uh, first and foremost, uh, a very good evening to Professor. Um, so actually, I'm a fan of uh, Joy Luck Club by oh, Amy Tan. Okay. Yeah, simply because um, I've, I've I've always had an affinity towards um, Asian literature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because um, I I've um, sat for SPM uh, literature before, and even then, I've always gravitated towards uh, Asian literature. So. Um, uh, and I, I remember studying this short story called uh, The Winter Hibiscus and uh, for some, for whatever reason, I felt very pulled towards it and I actually remember answering that question for, for SPM and I believe I answered it quite well. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've always had like an affinity towards Asian literature because I feel like it's something that I can relate to mm -hmm. being an Asian. I may not be Chinese or or uh, Vietnamese as the the girl, sorry, not Vietnamese, uh, uh, Burmese as the girl was in the Winter High Biscuits, but somehow I feel coming from that same region, mm -hmm. we share the same kind of like uh, dogma, we share the same kind of culture, uh, mm -hmm. thinking and stuff like that. So that's why I think I, I am very pulled towards Asian literature, simply because of the similarities that we share. Yes. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. I, I can actually relate to, to her answer because whenever I go to the bookstore and I see uh, the novel contains like characters uh, that are Asian or mm -hmm. some of the uh, settings of the place that is which I'm you know around in Asia, I can actually relate. Hey, I know this place. Uh, I, I know this. I don't know like that small feelings. I guess. Yeah. Uh, when you read that, that kind of book. So, yeah, I, I might be buying both novels by now. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. All but right. it, it's a good point mm -hmm. um, because this is one of the things I said about, you know, when you read, you learn. Mm -hmm. And here you are reading about a very different culture if you say she's a, it's a Burmese uh, setting. Yeah. And yet, as you read, you realize what the connections are, what the similarities are. And so your experience sort of grows because of what you've read. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Sun. Thank you. Our friends over here, again, they are from uh, Karen and Shania from uh, Penang Free School, Georgetown, and Trinity and Deandra are from SMK St. Thomas, Kuching Sarawak. So, Dr. Susan, uh, do you have any final words for our STPM 2020 candidates? Go back and read. Four times. Read the novel again. <laughs> Remind yourself about it. And practice writing your answers within a 40-minute time limit. Mm. Right? That'll be valuable for you. Yes, don't forget to use your time wisely mm -hmm. while answering. I understand when it comes to writing, we tend to actually like, you know, forget about the time. Yes. Oh, it's actually already 40 minutes and you are still at half of the <laughs> At page. the introduction. Yes, at the introduction. <laughs> and understand the question you must read and know your focus. So, 
you know, we don't want to, to pay too much time on one part only because we have a section A, section B, section C mm -hmm. where everything is consists of writing. Yes. And do not panic. I understand when whenever we feel like, oh, we are so ready, but then when it comes to the, you know, the school, when we arrive in the examination hall, we'll be like, what am I going to do now? <laughs> Yeah, so I hope happen. you guys, uh, our friends over here, uh, you know, get ready for the examination. Uh, and to those who are watching us, I hope uh, today's lesson uh, has been giving you so much information and inputs and tips from Dr. Susan for you guys to answer SCPM, the upcoming SCPM 2020. Thank you so much again to everybody and I'll be seeing you guys again in the next episode of Road to Success, STPM 2020. Bye! Good luck. Good luck, everybody. Dede TV, KPM. Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Azman. My daughter's name is Siti Aisha Nabiha. Aisha is currently studying in semester three and is studying in College Tengah Tanam, Tering Jaya. My hopes for, do for my daughter is should be she can excel well in her exam, have a place in university and have a better future for herself. I really hope she can go to the next level of study. If she score well, she will have a better chance to have a better job in her future. Uh, our hope is uh, for her to do well and of course we have 100% confident on her that he'll, she will give us a good result. And thank you so much to all the teachers who have helped her all the way along until uh, her exam over and uh, hopefully hopefully uh, her dreams come true as well. May God bless her. Thank you very much. Signing off, Lalita. Signing off, Lalita. A parent of Alicia. Alicia is doing her upper six at St. Michael Institution, Ipoh and she's sitting for her English literature. And uh, she has put in a lot of effort for this work to her online classes with the guidance of her teachers and tutors. I believe and I trust that she will achieve her goals by going into a good universities to make her dreams come true. Thank you.